Hello, I'm Jeff Perry from National Semiconductor. Although LED lighting is one of the fastest growing markets all around the world, when you're designing systems to support these LED lighting solutions, you can face a number of challenges. For example, if you increase the current supplied to an LED, the light output increases, which is a good thing since you can use fewer LEDs to get your desired light level. However, the temperature goes up as the current increases, and that causes the light output to go back down, perhaps more than it went up with the increase in current. So you need to control the temperature with a heat sink. You also have potential issues with the efficacy or efficiency of the LEDs degrading as the current is increased, which you need to consider if you want to meet the Energy Star standards or other governmental requirements. In the design process, you need to model all these behaviors in order to calculate and design to the true light output. Well now, to help make your LED design process easier, National Semiconductor is introducing the Webbench LED Architect online design tool, making it quicker and easier for you to design your system by creating solutions for complete lighting topologies in just seconds. The new design tool allows you to optimize your solution by evaluating heat sink size, conversion efficiency, and cost options required to achieve your desired light output. This tool draws from a full library of components, including more than 350 LEDs, 30 heat sinks, and 35 PowerWise LED drivers to design the best solutions based on your unique needs. The LED Architect tool models all the critical LED parameters and puts them into the software so that you can actually compute what the light output, temperature, and efficacy of the various LEDs is going to be under your operating conditions. Let me show you how to use the Webbench LED Architect tool and show you how it works. Here's what you see as you first go into the tool. On the LED requirements panel, there's a space where you enter your input voltage range, your ambient temperature, and most importantly, your desired light output. I will enter 24 to 32 for VIN and 30 degrees C for the ambient temperature, and also 2500 lumens for my desired light output. Below that, you see a slider that will allow you to change the color of the LEDs, and of course, the DC or AC input voltage switch. After you click the recalculate button, you will see the, the possible LED array solutions, each offering a different LED part number and manufacturer, and also the required heat sink. It shows you the number of LEDs required. There can be quite a range depending on the output of the various LEDs. And you can see here it gives you the cost of the LED plus the heat sink, the heat sink footprint, and the efficacy of that array. On the left side, we can maximize the visualizer graph. And on the x-axis of this graph, you can look at the luminous efficacy. And on the y-axis, you've got the footprint of the heat sink. And as you can see here, you got results in the upper left with poor efficacy and large footprints. But as you go down into the lower right area, you get to the sweet spot where you've got high efficacy and small footprint. The last parameter you see on the plot here is the bubble size or the diameter of these circles. And that represents the cost of the heat sink and the LEDs. The smaller those circles are, the lower the cost. The LED and heat sink choices can be further optimized by using the Webbench Optimizer knob. Choosing a higher number on the knob gives you a higher efficacy, lowering the current, but requiring more LEDs, which raises the cost. Choosing a lower number on the knob reduces the footprint by raising the current and requiring fewer LEDs, which tends to lower your cost, but it also results in worse efficacy. So after reviewing your choices, you pick the desired LED array and heat sink, and then you click on the Select LED button, and you proceed to the Driver Selection page. Here we see a listing of appropriate LED drivers, including Buck, Boost, and Buck Boost topologies, each of which has the LED array broken into appropriately sized series and parallel strings, which you can see on the block diagram here on the right. Once again, the choices are visualized on a graph showing trade-offs between system efficacy, footprint, and bomb cost. After you select your driver, click the Create Project button to create your Webbench design. This may be familiar to those of you who have used Webbench in the past, where you have the ability to do spice simulations, adjust bomb components, and further refine the circuit performance. But on the left side, we've added a panel here that shows you a top view of the LEDs on their heat sink, a block diagram of the drivers, and at the very top, you see some system level parameters, such as a system footprint, system bomb cost, system efficacy, and the heat sink information. So you can see that the Webbench LED Architect tool lets you model how your LED array will perform, taking into account temperature and current, and it will provide the actual driver configuration, topology, and LED arrangement based on how you turn the optimizer knob. So now you've seen it, the Webbench LED Architect online design tool, 
Truly a breakthrough offering from National Semiconductor, making your LED design process easier. This design tool is just part of the LED solutions that you will find from National Semiconductor, including a whole family of driver solutions that provide a constant current source to single LEDs or arrays of LEDs. To get the very latest on these offerings, visit us at national.com slash LED underscore architect. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.